Hi, I'm Paul Germain. Welcome to another session of Smart Boating. If you watched the show before, you understand that we cover a wide variety of topics. And the general idea is to give you some information that will help you make smarter decisions, whether it's hurricane protection or in a man overboard situation. Today we're taking a little side trip, and we're in Alton Bay, New Hampshire for the Alton Bay Boat Show. And uh, it's a really neat event, and, and joining us is, is a volunteer at the New Hampshire Boat Museum, Ken Sandhage, to tell us a little bit more about the event. Ken? Well, good morning. Good and thank you for being here. Thank you. I know sir. it's quite a trip for you to get up here. At, uh, we enjoy seeing you, and, and thanks. Thank you. This is a, a great event. It is a great event. Can you tell us a little bit about us? This is the 42nd annual, right? Absolutely. It's our 42nd year here. And uh, as you can see, we have probably 20 to 22 boats here. Mm -hmm. And uh, all uh, a lot of my friends, a lot of the boats, and they enjoy coming here. and they. They just like to share it with the public. Yes, yes, it's a neat venue and some cool boats. How about the museum? Does the New Hampshire Boat Museum fit into this event somehow? Absolutely, 100%. And uh, we're hoping to, to build a new boat museum in Back Bay, uh, Wolfboro. Mm -hmm. And we're gradually getting there, and we hope to uh, break ground uh, next spring. Excellent, excellent. Well, I've got a lot of boats. I'm actually going to be off camera. Uh, photographing, videoing the boats, and working with an expert volunteer to talk about them. So uh, why don't mm. I get started? Well, here's a nice looking boat at the show. Uh, it's a 1953 Chris Craft 22 foot utility uh, boat. You've judged a lot of shows. Uh, what are some of the interesting aspects of this boat? Well, Chris Craft built a lot of these. Uh, they were a real popular boat for the company. It was really a pre-war design. They, they built them in 40 and 41. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the war came along and they had to stop and create wartime production rather than civilian. Yeah. And they kept the hull shape. And right after the war, they modified the top a little bit and it became one of their best sellers. Oh. So mm -hmm. it's a. Now, is this double planked mahogany? The bottom is double planked the mahogany. The bottom is. That's okay. right. And All the right. sides and the deck are single plank on batten strips. Mm -hmm. And the ribs and that sort of thing, they'd be oak, would they? Uh, actually, no. Chris Craft framed in mahogany as well. Oh, they did? Yeah, because oak, oak moves less than mahogany, so it made a more stable construction. Okay. Yeah. And, well, here's a good shot of the bow. Mm -hmm. And by this era, the the open utility boat was becoming much more popular oh, yeah. uh, in lieu of the, the triple cockpit or double cockpit enclosed boats. Mm -hmm. So these were real popular with families. Now here's an interior shot of the, of the boat. Uh, looks pretty spacious, uh, a lot of bright work on it. Yeah, well, well they are spacious. I mean, th there's a lot of room you can walk around in them. Mm -hmm. They're uh, and, and a good comfortable running boat. Yeah. A good boat for Winnipesaukee. It's like uh, some styling cues from the automotive industry at that time. Well, certainly the stylists were starting to, you know, make a play in the marine industry after World War II. Mm -hmm. So, and typical blue upholstery, which was the norm. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Now, here's a nice looking boat. This is an alignment, a 1991 27-footer. Uh, these... They, most of these were made in Sandusky, Ohio, right? Yes, Lyman was out of Ohio. And these were really designed and built for the Great Lakes, mm -hmm. so they are really great rough water boat. Mm -hmm. uh, we see a lot of these still up in the Great Lakes area on the St. Lawrence Waterway is really where they're the most popular. But Winnipesaukee is also rough enough that a boat like this makes really good sense. Right, and these were uh, marine plywood right. and clinker built yep. as opposed to carpal. Yep. Right? Yep. Lap strake, if you look yes. at the sides yep. you'll see those are all laps, mm -hmm. uh, you know, long strakes and they overlap and they're made out of plywood. Mm -hmm. And they had a number of different models, if I remember correctly, but they went from outboard up to large inboards. Right, right. you could buy all the way up to a 30-footer or a 13-footer. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and frankly, they all have the same basic profile and shape, so you can pick out alignment. Right, kind of proven. Uh, yeah, I believe this is the 26-footer, mm -hmm. and this is a single-engine 26. You could also buy this with twin engine. With twins, okay, yeah. all and right. Usually forward up underneath the front deck, they had a V-berth, Okay. So a lot of people would go camping in them, mm -hmm. and you could spend the overnight and fish all night or whatever and still... Right. Still Apparently these were very uh, popular with hunters and fishermen and people that wanted a big seaworthy boat that they didn't have to maintain all day long. Right. The fishermen were really 
keen on these. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's their primary use today yeah. as well. We see the works where the cabin is that you were just talking yeah. about up there, and two to one helm position, one complimentary seat there. Yep. Yeah. And that's a, what is that, a big crusader in there? Yeah. Yeah. How about this? This is a pretty well-known boat up in the Winnipesock area, isn't it? Well, the, the Grey Owl is pretty famous amongst the boat enthusiasts there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very original 22-foot Chris Craft. Mm -hmm. This is the triple cockpit model. Okay. Uh, they introduced this boat in 1927. Mm -hmm. Before that, they only made this boat in 26 feet. Okay. And there was demand for a smaller version for smaller lakes, and this is one of them. Now, it's rare to have a boat of this age in this type of condition, isn't it? This is unrestored. This yeah. is a, a really fine example of Chris Graff's early work. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I mean, top sides, sides, bottom, engine are still original. Right. And the styling, I guess you can kind of date the boat to a certain extent by the styling cues you see up the, the sheer, or, you know, the, the lines of the boat, right? Right. Well, that, that stand-up square windshield is very indicative of early on. Oh, uh, really? The nice option on this boat is that it has that folding top. Oh, yeah, okay, that we can see up in the top so you, of the picture, but we've yeah. got the interesting windshield there, too. Yeah, right? and it pivots in the center, so if you want a little breeze, you can un unlatch it, basically, and you can tip it sideways. Oh, that's so, nice. Yeah, so it, it becomes a nice, cool ride on a hot summer day. Yeah. And you get out of the sun if you have the top up. Okay, all right. And they use different tops for different uh, years of this yeah. boat, right? Yeah, this is, this is the crow top, mm -hmm. uh, crow manufacturing. And now we're getting a close-up of the model CM Chrysler flathead six-cylinder, and that's the original engine, serial numbers matching for this wow. boat. That's a rare bird. Huh? It's very unusual, <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's really nice to see at the boat shows. Right, and this would be considered a dual comp, I guess. How about this boat? This looks like a replica or derivative of a Garwood. Well, I mean, this boat or, or what this boat was built after mm -hmm. was a Garwood, post-war Garwood, that was converted into a sports speedster. Okay. And it was such a success that the owners decided, hey, we should build another one, and this is the second of yeah. the two. The Garwood was a big deal, right? A very, well, very fast boat. It's very well known for speed in Gar the old days. Garwood held the world speed record for years and years. Mm -hmm. um, he was going 130 miles an hour in 1932. Wow. So, so he was, you know, he knew his business. He knew how to go fast, and he marketed his boats as being fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but this is a fun and particularly fast boat. This would go up against what, the Chris Crafts and the Centuries and that sort of thing of the day? Yeah, I mean, very few of the day boats would compete with this Is that right? on speed. Well, yeah. well, this has a modern engine in it, and, yeah. and it's a mighty, mighty good performer. Yeah, interesting the way they've got the different colors of wood there, or bleaches or stains, I yeah. guess. Yeah, well that's, you know, in the late 30s they were doing the two-tone decks, mm -hmm. and so this is indicative. They, they peeled us a little bit of info from the early days and a little bit from the 40s in the styling of the okay. hull. Uh, and you can see there's the big block. Is yeah, that it's a big got a block? Three, 353. Sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. No. yeah, mm -hmm. a worked up small block in, yes. in, in there. Yeah. And here's the kind of a profile of the boat showing where the engine is and, yeah. and the cockpit here, which is a, well, mm, pretty much towards the stern. Yeah, seating for two, that's yeah. all you get with yeah. these. Yeah. But, but high performance. Mm hmm. Yeah, complete instrument panel there. Got some bolsters around there to see it. Well, crash yourself a little bit. Crash pad for a good reason. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, and a and a handle to hold on to if you're the passenger. Yeah. It looks, it? looks like it's made for speed. Well, this is an interesting little boat. It's a it's a Sears kit boat, a 1956 uh, 22 foot express cruiser. Now, a lot of people don't know it, but Sears was in the business of selling boats that other manufacturers made for them, right? That's right, they yeah. did. Uh, I know that the Ted Williams line of motors, they had a whole bunch of different uh, groups that they, they're represented. Now, now, but this was a kit boat. Yes. So this was sold to the owner in a knocked down parts box, mm -hmm. and the owner would build it themselves. Okay, so they had to be a little handy. Yes, they did. Yeah. And in the 50s, there was quite a trend towards the do-it-yourselfers. Yes. Uh, Chris Craft made kit boats. Uh, I'm trying to think of Higgins. I don't think Higgins did, but mm -hmm. several manufacturers made kit boats that mm -hmm. you would order. Mm -hmm. A box showed up, mm -hmm. and the directions were in there, and off you went. Get started. Now, this is yeah. marine plywood, which helps right. 
make it a little easier, right? You're right. doing plank by plank. Yeah, in the, by the 50s, the, the plywood had really taken hold because it was a much easier way to build a boat. Yeah. It required a little less skill, let's be honest. Yeah, a uh, few, but few less pieces, right? But it gave you a, a fine boat to go use. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. And, and this would have been a, been a fairly large one. Oh, in, would. In that, I mean, the Chris Craft kit boats went up to 22 or 23 feet. Mm -hmm. And but that was a, a, quite a project for someone to build. Yes. And, and this is pretty traditional. It's got the V-berth sleeping area in the front. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Helm station on the right. Simple helm, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wide open, plenty of space to do. It's a nice flexible boat. You could do a lot of right. things with that boat. Right, you could camp in it, you could fish in it, you could you know, just run around and enjoy the day in it. Yeah, yeah, and relatively inexpensively. Right. Penyon. Now this is, a, this is a neat little boat. This is a Penyon Swift in 1951. And this was a part of a basically a race boat series, right? Yes, P Penny Ann built lots of small, you know, fishermen type runabouts. Yes. yes. And then they introduced their Penny Ann Swift line, which was for class racing. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were very successful doing that. They had a very unique bottom shape. They built the Swifts in 10 feet, 12 feet, and 14. Okay. This is the 12. This mm -hmm. was the most popular for sure. Mm -hmm and people would run up to, I've even seen 50 horsepower on the 12-footer. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, they're, my son had one, and they're great performers. They're yeah. a really fun boat, and pretty utilitarian on the side in that you could put four people in it if you're not racing, and yes. it would become a family boat. Yes. Now, is that like strip-built construction? It's strip-built construction, much like a canoe, and mm -hmm. then it's canvas-covered. Okay, yeah, so, that surface looks like canvas, right. yeah. The canvas is what keeps it, makes it waterproof. Now, this is a race boat, so maybe that helps explain why there isn't much hardware on the front. Yeah, deck, right? there, there would be no real need to have hardware <laughs> on a boat. It just slows you down with the right. weight. Right. Uh, and you can see it was clinch nailed on the deck. I mean, they were relatively quickly made. Oh, they were. But they were well made. And you can see all, see how many ribs are in the bottom. Yes, like a canoe so, almost. Right, it me truly like a canoe there. And then you've got the helm in the center of the boat as opposed to one side right. or the other. So it, while being so small, you'd put this weight right. in the center. Right, 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 yeah, yeah. And it looks again, whether you're going racing or just out fishing, it looks like the layout lends itself to uh, you know, kind of cross-functionality. Yeah. A lot, of, the, a lot of different things you do with a boat like that. These were real popular mm -hmm. in uh, small lakes. Well, here's a pretty boat. This is a, a Century Coronado, a 1956 Century Coronado. About how many, how, how many feet long is that boat? Uh, this boat would be 20 feet. 20 feet, yeah. The, they introduced the Coronado in 1954 at 20 feet. Mm -hmm. And so 54, 55, and 56 were the 20-footers. I see. Then they stretched it to 21. Yeah. And somewhere in the early 70s, they actually moved it to the 22 feet. Okay. But but these are the collectible ones. The early 20-footers oh, are the ones are. that the collectors like to like to find. Okay. All right. And t typically, I mean, this boat would have been painted. Had had some white paint on the sides when okay. it was new. Okay. They've stripped the paint and yep. made it all bright. Yes. It's you know some people like that look better. Right. It's very uh, attractive. Yeah. Yeah. And as far as the upholstery and interior, that's that's a color scheme that they offered. Oh, it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they offered some pretty garish colors. I mean, I've seen bright red and white. I've seen blue and and. Yep. Uh, and aquamarine. They were pretty flashy, the centuries, weren't they? They sure were. Right. But, and, you know, if you look look at the hardware, yes. uh, from the bow piece, which is that multi-chrome piece, I mm -hmm. mean, they weren't shy about putting, putting you know, streamlined hardware on their boats. Mm -hmm. And likewise, if you look at the gauges and the gauge cluster and the, the I'm not sure what you call it in the center, but the, mm -hmm. the I mean, the all kinds of chrome and parts and pieces, yes. and a big wrap around windshield. Really nicely finished, I think, you know. Yeah, and, and you know, fully attractive. upholstered. Big motors in these, right? And Century was never shy about putting horsepower in their boat. Right. Uh, you could put the 300 horsepower Cadillac in this boat. Yeah. Uh, and, and they did that an awful lot in the, that era. Off you go. Now, here's a, a one of the larger boats. It was interesting, the diversity of the boats here today at the show. Now, this is a 1935 Cushcraft Cruiser. What do you think, 28 to 30 feet, somewhere in that? Yeah, they, they built this basic model in three sizes, mm -hmm. uh, 26, 28, and 30. Okay. Uh, at least those were the most popular on Winnipesaukee. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were they were fully complemented. They have the galley, they have oh, the I kitchen, see. they have mm -hmm. all, all of the sleeping 
accommodations down below. Mm -hmm. And they have a riding cockpit up in the front, so the kids or oh, mom yeah, could hop up in the front and still get in the wind even though they were in just a cabin cruiser. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what, were they, uh, what was the construction on a boat like this? Uh, well, this is very similar to all Chris Crafts in is. that okay. double planked, hard shine on the bottom yep. with single plank side or sides and decks, okay. batten seam construction so above. So they got very used to that and very good at that. And then they, they used it throughout their line. Right. Almost right. all the Chris Crafts were double plank bottom, single plank top sides. Okay. Here's another view of it yep. here at the show. Uh, yeah, interesting. It's a pretty, pretty lines to the boat. Yeah, I mean this this was a great choice on Winnipesaukee because it's a big body of water and the wind blows up. Yes. And a boat this size, you don't ever you never get in trouble out on the water if the wind kicks up on you. Right, right. Here's an so. interior shot. These these boats lean towards having like a salon, if you will, behind well, the seats, right? Exactly. I mean there's there's a there's a head, there's a dinette, there's a kitchen, there's right. the berths. Right, and then we'll see a big open area here where yeah. and plenty of room to socialize. And it's got the drop curtain, so if it does rain and you're overnighting on it, you can enclose the back end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, very, very well thought out. It's a beauty. Well, here's another just great boat here at the show today. This is a Hacker Sport. It's a 1998, so this is a, a replica of the original Hackers that were built years ago, right? Right. I mean, this this is the new Hackercraft Corporation over on Lake George that's mm -hmm. back in business building boats. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, the new company has now built more boats than the original company did. <laughs> uh, and this is this was a, a a boat introduced here recently, and they were trying to sort of capture the Italian market oh, from yeah. Riva. Yes, it has so those lines to that, it. That's really raked bow, and it yes. also has the raked transom. Yes. Uh, but they were they were going after the sort of the European mm -hmm. minded. Yeah, buyer. you can feel you get that flavor to it when you right. look at the boat. Right. Right. So. And, and Chris, or excuse me, Hacker never built this boat back in the day. Oh, they didn't? Okay. No, no. This is a new design that has come out of the new Hackercraft Corporation. All right, all right. And that's in the high 20s in terms of footage? This is probably a 28-footer. That's what I'm yeah. thinking, yeah. And here we see that real raked transom yes. with the swim ladder that's kind of built into the transom and mm -hmm. the swim platform. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they've, they've tried to incorporate a bunch of features that normally wouldn't be in one of these boats. Right. And yet, if you look at the dash panel, that's still a traditional dash panel and steering wheel from the 20s and 30s. Okay. So they've retained a lot of some of the, the nicer things from that era, and they've incorporated it with modern modern boats. Right, and they're running modern power here, probably a oh, big yeah. block, 454. Yeah, yeah, plenty of horsepower for this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. So... That's a pretty, pretty boat there. Yeah, and a water ski pylon, which yes. would be interesting. Yes. Now, speaking of water skiing boats, this is this is a boat designed for that, a Century Resorter. It's got, a, I understand, a big Ford 390 in it. It's a 1965. Now, these were really known for the water skiing use, right? This is the boat that we all wanted when we grew up. Yes. Uh, it was 285 horsepower in a 17-foot boat. <laughs> I mean, it was sort of an unheard of thing back then. Yeah. Uh, but it was the water ski boat of choice. I mean, you could pull five skiers with this boat mm -hmm. without any trouble at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. And the 17, I do believe, was their most popular model. Oh, it was? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was big enough, and it rode well enough, and it had enough power that that you know everybody would look at it as an option versus the Coronado which was much more expensive yes and not as good for water skiing yes. and then the 16 foot boat that they built was probably a little too small for four adults okay. to go putt right. putt around right in. right so this was a nice size right and they used this boat at Cypress Gardens for well, the water did. ski program oh, yes. okay oh. yeah and by this era you can see that you know, the, the wooden decks are gone. Yes. They, that's plywood that's covered with vinyl. Mm -hmm. uh, it's saved on maintenance costs and it's right. saved on construction costs. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Here's the interior shot. Uh, dash is simple and functional. Yeah, the best yep. and actually this dash is more like the boats from the 70s than oh, it is. I expected to see in 65. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but he's got modern gauges. He doesn't have the original old gauges and that's why. Right. But, and you see this water ski pylon again. Just in front of that huge engine yeah. box, and that's yeah. where the, yeah. and this is a, the Ford a, resides. This is a truly 52 to 54 mile an hour boat. Is it really? Yeah, barefoot anytime you want. Back I mean. in 1965. That's, that's Big performance, right? yes. Now this one's a really pretty boat. It's a Hacker triple cockpit. Uh, it's a replica of a 1927. Yeah. That's, that's quite a boat there. 
Well, this is built by the same company that we saw earlier, yes. except this is their more traditional boat. Okay. Th this is a boat that Hackercraft actually built in the 30s. Right. And it's a, a more exact replica, let's say that. It is, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And but the modern the modern company has taken that second seat and expanded it a little bit. I see. Because the yeah. engines today aren't quite as big as the early Kermaths and Scripps. Okay. That, so you can open up the that. cockpit while right. you're reducing the engine. So you get the same horsepower in a smaller package in the motor box, and they were able to extend the seat another 10 inches or so mm -hmm. and give you some more seating. So you can put a lot of passengers in that two, six, maybe eight people in a boat yeah, like that. Yeah, I think huh? you could put eight with with no trouble at all in a, in a boat like this right. and still get pretty good performance out of it with eight aboard. Now, what would that that'd be a big block, like a 454? More than likely, they powered this with the big block Chevrolet. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's a side view. This has some sheer to it, too, right? Coming yeah. Coming the bow. I mean, there's, I mean I, I'm kind of a pre-war lover, and uh, I mean, this is a typical, traditional pre-war looking boat. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and it's towel racks, and I mean, it's got the cubby holes for storage in the front, and you know, th these are fairly well appointed. Yes, yes, yes. It looks like it'd be very comfortable too. And for Winnipesaukee, a great choice. Mm -hmm. Just, just you know, a boat this big or, or at thirty feet. Yep. I mean, a big windy rough day. You're still able to go out yep. and go out to dinner or do and what you want, and, and, and you're and not safety. worried about being pounded to death when you're way home. Right, um, right. Well, that's a good point. Right. Yeah, but here's the case. You see, new instrument. I mean, this is a new boat, but you know, a more modern instrument cluster and steering mm -hmm. wheel setup, mm -hmm. and then you can, seating. you can see that big horseshoe seating that they're able to do with the extended cockpit. Yeah, yeah. Now here's a very interesting boat. You know. Uh, People, even those familiar with racing, sometimes they don't realize all the classes. And this was a boat designed uh, to compete in the the Gold Cup races in the, in the late 1940s. Right. I, I have heard all about this boat, but I had never seen it before. <laughs> right. uh, I mean, the Gold Cup class started in the early teens, probably, or 1910, uh, and it was uh, it was the the foremost boat racing. Okay. class right. that there was and it yeah. was you know it anything it, goes it attracted well <laughs> it attracted all of the the real serious racers yes uh, and for a bunch of years they limited the horsepower excuse me not the horsepower they limited the engines to 625 cubic inch okay but after world war ii we had all of the rolls royce right and allison engines available engines, yes. and they relaxed the the regulations and so now you could run 1,600 cubic inch. Mm. And so this class changed dramatically, and lots of people tried to do innovative things. Right. This one had a Ranger aircraft well, engine in it, right? Yeah. Unusually, this, this boat had an air-cooled engine. Yeah. So they had to put that big vent in the front right. so to get enough air to keep the engine cool. Right. This, this one is just is a powerful engine, but it's not what well, was it's, there before, yeah, right? This, it's a modern V8 in yeah. it now. Big 502, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but this boat was built to to compete for the Gold Cup. Yeah, uh, and I'm not sure what happened, but it never did. Oh, it's in storage, I guess, for like 60 years. Yeah, and it got put into storage like by 1950, and it stayed there ever since. Yeah. So this is a recent arrival on the show circuit. Good to see it back out. Great to see. Now this is another uh, race boat here, uh, Inchi. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, this is a replica, but the original Inchi was owned by Horace Dodge. Yeah. And it's in the early 20s, or excuse me, mid 20s. Uh, this boat would have had the 625 cubic inch Gold Cup Packard okay. engine in yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, and it was a perpetual contender in the Gold Cup all through the 30s. It was. It okay. had multiple different names and multiple different owners, uh, but it was always competitive and it was always a great boat. Uh, the original has, of course, disappeared. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Mark Mason took it on himself and he's recreated it. Wow. And it's a beautiful job. Yes, yes. And yeah, that's 20 some odd feet. This is 26 or 7. 26 or 27, yeah. yeah. Very it's, slim. It's very and skinny. Narrow. And yeah. it, what's interesting about this boat is most boats have a relatively wide transom. Yes. Well, the, the transom in the water at this boat is only 27 or 28 inches it's wide. It's like a torpedo stern. Well, to yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, to me, it goes against conventional thinking that you want a nice wide surface to keep it, sta excuse me, stable. Right, right, yeah. But. And here's the shot of the yeah. uh, cockpit here. And you can see the gauges. Mark, Mark does a 
great job with dash panels. Yeah. And that's probably pretty close to what it looked like when, oh, it, was, right? when yeah. it was new. Yeah. 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 And these boats always raced with a driver and a mechanic to keep an eye on oh, most of the gauges, but the engine if they had issues. Is that right? Yeah. Huh. Well, here's, here's another just gorgeous boat here at the show today. It's a Chris Craft Triple Cockpit uh, 1929. Yeah. Well, this is, you know, this was Chris Craft's stock and trade boat. Okay. This is the model that really put them on the planet. Uh, 26 feet, triple cockpit. And they put fairly good sized engines in them, mm -hmm. 200 horsepower, mm -hmm. uh, Scripps and Kermath engines. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they built that model of boat from 1922 till 1931, okay. and they sold thousands of them. Yes. And it was yes. the most popular of the big boats. Oh, it was? Okay. Yeah. And this one has a Dietrich top, which mm -hmm. is not the Crow. Okay. Dietrich was introduced in the early 30s, so mm -hmm. this top would have been put on a few years after it was new. I see. But, but these are just nice boats. There's a lot of them on Winnipesaukee. There are? Yes, there mm -hmm. are. Uh, there I like was, the balance. There's a very balanced appearance yeah, to it. Yeah, and if, you know, you look, I mean, they had a full complement of hardware, intelligently placed. You had the yes. fender cleats. Yeah. You had the mooring cleats. They had all the stuff, the towel racks. Mm -hmm. uh, and you'll see, again, towel racks for the guests in the second seat. Oh, right. So yeah. they... They were a nice boat, and mm -hmm. they were big enough that on Winnipesaukee, it didn't matter what the weather, you could still go out and go for a ride. Yeah, and this has been repowered, it looks like. Yeah, as well, most boats on Winnipesaukee get repowered. Yes. Because, you know, it, it, if you go out to dinner across the lake, it's a 65-mile trip. Right. So most most owners put their original motors on the side and then put a V8 in to, mm -hmm. to run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's just, uh, that's a really pretty boat right there, uh, especially with a... It looks so original. Someone's really taking very, very good care of it. Well, Ken, it's, it's, it's hard to believe it's time to wrap up the show today. We've seen just some very cool, different boats, very rare. So it's been very exciting that way. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up the show today? Well, the uh, it, it, it's great for everyone to hear. Of course, you can't see all the people that's here. We got a we got a big road race that takes place today, right, and after right. the road race, there'll be a lot of people here and so forth. Yeah. But the uh, New Hampshire Boat Museum is it's a great organization, and yeah. I, I, I just wish uh, if someone, we're always looking for volunteers, yeah. and, uh, and we're looking, if, if you'd like to make a donation to the Boat Museum, it's, it's, it's very welcomed. Yes. Now, uh, to, to learn more about an event like this, they could probably go to your website, right? Absolutely. Yeah. What is, the, what is that website? Well, uh, the uh, New NH, Hampshire NH, NH, right? Boat Museum. In, uh, dot org, I believe, right? Yes, it yep. is, definitely. Yep. Okay, so that's yeah. a good place for them to go and get uh, more information on the museum itself and on events like this, right? Definitely, yes, it's, it's, it's all there and anything would be appreciated. And uh, like I said uh, a few minutes ago, we, we hope to break ground for our our, our, our new uh, boat museum this, this coming spring. Great, great. So hopefully everything goes right. And thank you very much. Thank you, and, Ken. Uh, the, uh, here we got another boat sitting out here and yep. all the docks are yeah. filled as yeah. usual. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Well, thank you, Smart Boating viewers, for watching this today. If you have comments or questions, visit us at www.smartboatingus.com. <laughs>